This is where we get a lava flow um, flowing over what is essentially a marsh mm -hmm. and you get active lobes of lava coming off the active front of the lava flow itself and as the lava on the bottom cools but more lava is being pushed in behind it you get the lava pushing through into the damp sediment. This causes superheated water to explode up a bit like a spot popping creating these <laughs> right. features that we can see around us. What called called again, pseudo craters or rootless cones because they don't have a vent they just oh, occur yeah. and then they solidify as the, the lava flow carries on. Just arrived in Iceland, met with a squad, you might remember Claire. Yeah, you have to move it down. <laughs> from Glacier's <laughs> video from the Swiss Alps. So uh, we're here with NST again and we're doing some geography and physics. And geography. What is geography again? Oh, it's physics but slow, isn't it? Physics but slower, much, much slower. <laughs> Catler, you were talking about that, like they're monitoring it because it's kind of due to erupt. Yeah, there's quite a few due to erupt. Oh right. Quite so how do they monitor the, the ice? There's the various, ice. various different monitoring techniques. Um, one of which is they they use GPS imagery to keep an eye on what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, they have strainometers on the side of the volcanoes on top of some of the glaciers. But one of the things they do continually with the data sent to the Icelandic Meteorological website is they have little boxes on a lot of the bridges and they monitor the mineral content of the water coming down the bridges. And the mineral content of the water, if there's an eruption under the glacier, will change. And that tells them that there's something happening under the ice they can't see. And then you get a crater appearing on the top of the ice, which kind of dips mm -hmm. in. And then often the eruption will start. But Katla, the anniversary, 100 year anniversary for Katla erupting last time mm -hmm. was yesterday. So it apparently erupts every 75 years. So it was already 25 years overdue. So then and we were on the uh, we were glacier at the foot of it. Yes, yesterday. And standing that was basically very close to it. You talked about they monitored the earthquakes and then like, um, what do you say, they, they, they get closer and closer together? Yep, so they, they kind of get them, them in swarms, so the earthquakes happen in all different places and yeah. then as the volcano is going to erupt, the, the earthquakes get closer and closer and closer together. And oh, they get at the position of them? Yeah, so they get closer together oh, okay. and stronger and then you get kind of a cluster and that's often an indication of an eruption about to happen, you know in the not too distant future. For Hecla, which is the one that I've got most data for, you've got about 90 minutes warning from knowing it's going to erupt to it actually happening. How to locate where an earthquake is from, because that's something you do need to know in GCSE, which is that um, you've got a, this essential gap between the P wave arriving at a place and the S wave arriving at a place. And um, that's because the P wave, the primary wave is often and kind of incorrectly called, um, but the primary wave is the fastest one, the P wave, um, arrives before the secondary wave. And you know how fast those two waves are traveling. And because you know the interval, you can work out how far away from that particular listening station the earthquake was. And if you've got more than one listening station, you need at least three, then you can kind of plot these radii and uh, you know that somewhere on that radius from that listening station was that earthquake. And if you get three circles that overlap, it has to be where all three cross. So that's a really quite a smart way. So you're saying that if they're getting closer and closer to the volcano, yeah. that means something's going on within that volcano. Yeah, it means something's going on in the magma chamber underground. But you just like to stop here because it's a place where children can play on. <laughs> so it's a place for them to learn something slightly unusual about Iceland because this doesn't really happen in many other places. I think it's pretty cool.